Hi everyone, thank you for coming. My name is Lauren Lebunsky and I am the Public Relations Manager here at Dealer Spike. Today we're going to be talking about the best solution that we have found for listing inventory on third party sites. And that is with our new preferred partner, Auction123. My co-host today is Tracy Amato, who is our Auction123 expert. She's going to be walking us through the top sites for marketing your inventory, such as Craigslist, eBay, and Facebook Marketplace, as well as some best practices for how to be successful on these sites. Um, we'll also be talking about how Auction123 makes this easy and effective. So Tracy, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, Lauren. Hi, everyone. I'm Tracy Amato, Executive Director here at Auction123, and thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to be speaking with you all and offering lots of information on the best ways to market your dealership and your inventory on these top sites. We're also going to take you on a quick tour of Auction123's tools and how we help automate your listing processes so you and other members of your dealership team can concentrate on the leads you generate instead of worrying on how you're going to get that inventory live. And then for those of us who have attended our previous seminars and are joining us again today, we're going to be offering even more tips for success on Craigslist this time around. I'm also going to share what's on the horizon with Facebook Marketplace and how you can start taking advantage of Marketplace as it stands today. I'm looking forward to sharing some information on our eBay and Craigslist posting solutions, along with offering some really great tips and strategies to help you be really successful in your initiatives on these sites and drive more leads to your dealership. So make sure you guys stay tuned because later in this webinar, we are also going to let you know how you can save money on Auction123 when you sign up for it through Dealer Spike. Um, also, just before we dive in, I wanted to point out the control panel that you should be able to see um, on the corner of your screen. You can minimize this or expand it any time by just clicking on that orange arrow button. Um, and then also, we have set aside some time at the end of our presentation for Q&A. So you can use the question section that's in your control panel to submit any questions you might have. So just a quick note on why we think it is so important for our dealers to be sharing inventory on third-party sites. So if you are a dealer and you are currently not posting on a third-party site like Craigslist or eBay, uh, you're really only opening up the opportunity for consumers to buy from you on your website. Now, as great as your website may be and as much traffic as you might be getting from it with your online leads, you are limiting yourself by not posting inventory on third-party sites as well. Uh, this is another avenue and a huge opportunity to be making more sales. So there's really no reason not to do it. Tracy, would you agree with that? 100%. Your shoppers are doing a ton of research online, and by the time they are talking to you, they've narrowed their list down to a couple of different units, or maybe even know the exact unit they want to buy. It's so important to be on as many of these top shopping sites out there as you can, so when your buyers are visiting the 10-plus sites they use to make a purchasing decision, your dealership and your inventory are appearing in their search. Yeah, that's a great point. So, Tracy, can you tell us what exactly makes Craigslist and eBay stand out from other listing sites, like, for example, CycleTrader or RV World? Craigslist has consistently been one of the best sites to reach local shoppers. The vast majority of leads you're going to receive from your Craigslist ads are phone calls or walk-ins to the dealership. All of your calls you receive are going to typically be people right in your backyard, so it's really easy to encourage them to visit the dealership and continue the shopping process in person. eBay, though, is a completely different animal. With eBay, you're exposing your inventory on a national scale, and you're going to get so many more eyeballs than you would with any other listing site. And the best part is eBay is a transactional marketplace, meaning any one of your shoppers has the ability to purchase your inventory right from the site, making you a true e-commerce dealership. Great. So let's talk about Facebook Marketplace. I understand that Auction123 was picked by Facebook to integrate and send inventory to Marketplace when they announced Marketplace for auto dealerships. When can other dealers start taking advantage of this integration? Well, we've been working with Facebook on getting support for non-auto inventory since January, and they're anticipating launching non-auto support this year. That's really exciting, as auto dealers have been seeing a lot of success from having their inventory live on Marketplace. We were just given the green light to start sending non-automotive inventory to the site for dealers who really want their inventory live, regardless if the site has categories and filters available to search those non-auto units. Now, while I don't expect 
expect these dealers will get the full experience marketplace will be once the site is built out to fully support a shopper looking for the non-auto inventory, they will get a lot of traction and leads. That's awesome. I do know that we have a few dealer spike dealers who are just getting started um, sending their inventory live through Auction 123 to Marketplace. What should those dealers expect their experience to be like right now? Well, first off, there are rules and stipulations to the inventory we are even allowed to send there at this time. Again, this is all going to likely change once they build out support for non-auto. But at this time, units we are sending must have a 17-digit VIN, must have mileage over 500, a price, more than three images, and they're accepting used inventory only at this time. Now, because they have not built out the support for non-auto, the only way to find inventory is using the search bar at the top of the page. The inventory will be posted to the vehicle's category, but there aren't any shop by type filters for non-auto. Also, if we're sending your Harley-Davidson inventory, Harley-Davidson's not gonna show in the list of makes you can filter by, and that's because they just haven't built it out yet. So the only way to find the inventory is via the search bar, but it is working. These dealers are having their inventory found and receiving leads, but definitely not the same volume as the full experience existed. When we, search when we send that inventory live and searching, we're pushing it as the dealership Facebook page. So the dealership must have an established Facebook business page. All listings will link back to the page so that offers great attribution to the store. As just like Craigslist, these are gonna be your local shoppers. Also, when posting as a dealership, there's a click to call display and interested customers can call you directly from the ad. But nearly all of the leads that come in from Marketplace are via Facebook Messenger. And Facebook puts a lot of weight on dealer's search results on both response rate and response time for the inquiries received through Messenger. It's really critical the dealership is prepared to answer these messages really promptly. Got it. So a response time will affect a dealer's visibility on Marketplace. Um, is there anything else that a dealer can do to boost their search rankings on Marketplace? Well, they also put a lot of emphasis on image quality. Facebook isn't keen on images that have watermarks and phone numbers, although that's pretty much industry standard practice. I think the number one thing to know about Marketplace is that it's still in beta, meaning Facebook is constantly tweaking and changing things about search, display, and even what the site looks like. The whole Marketplace product in itself is designed for mobile, as around 90% of Marketplace traffic is from a mobile device. And they're really not investing in enhancing the desktop version. So you're going to get a very different experience on mobile. And it's important when you're reviewing Marketplace, you are doing so from a mobile device. Now, when it comes to search results, Marketplace isn't designed to be able to find all the inventory being sent for a particular seller. That's a big thing that comes up with dealers using it. They want to be able to see all of their inventory live on the site, and it's just not designed to do so. Even when searching for a specific unit, Marketplace is only serving so many results. So while you may not see your item, others can, because each user's experience is different, down to how Marketplace looks or works. It sounds like it's really a work in progress. 100%. And who knows if it's ever going to be complete. I anticipate to see Marketplace continue to grow and morph as it matures, but we've been really impressed with the results so far. I did want to mention a few more things that are important to know. We've had a large number of dealers calling us because they were posting inventory at their personal Facebook pages and ended up being blocked from viewing Marketplace. This is happening quite a bit, so please be aware it is a risk if you're trying to post as a consumer. Mm -hmm. Facebook wants businesses posting and being identified as businesses. Also, we get a lot of requests from dealers who want us to repost their inventory every day, and this is definitely not something Facebook allows, and it doesn't really help with search at all. It's certainly not going to help in the future as they make changes to enhance the search results to weigh more heavily on dealers who are offering great experiences with response times in Messenger. Awesome. That was a ton of really helpful information. Now, for dealers who are interested in signing on for Marketplace as a standalone product without Craigslist or eBay integration, the special pricing that we are offering through the Auction 123 and Dealer Spike Partnership is $100 a month. Uh, however, if you want to add it to your current Auction 123 package through Dealer Spike, it's going to be an additional $50 per month. So let's dive into some ways to be successful on Craigslist. 
In past webinars, we went over some great tips on why it's better to use an automated method for listing on Craigslist, and we talked about the benefit of spreading listings out as opposed to pushing them live all at once. What are some best practices on the amount of inventory listed? Should a dealer just post all of their inventory to Craigslist? It all depends on the dealer's Craigslist budget and inventory volume. If you have 100 units or less, we definitely recommend posting most, if not all, inventory each month. In fact, we have many dealers who post all items two times a month just to help with visibility within search results. Posting an ad here or there or only investing in posting a small percentage of your inventory each month will likely not generate a lot of traction. It's really important to commit to a healthy budget, and if you have a very high volume of inventory, an analysis of your units become more important to determine what will work best for Craigslist. So in general, is there a guideline for what kind of inventory should be posted to Craigslist? For starters, there's a huge misconception that Craigslist is only for those really low-priced inventory units. We've recently worked with dealerships who do a fantastic job of tracking the source of their leads and the complete path from lead to sale. And looking at their sales attributed to Craigslist, we were all kind of blown away by how many higher-priced and newer inventories sold to Craigslist leads. Also, we saw a large number of sales from new items that were never even listed to Craigslist. Your Craigslist leads are all local shoppers, so once they're on your showroom floor, it may no longer be about the unit that brought them to your dealership in the first place. And that's what makes Craigslist so great. It's an awesome way to generate even more local leads. So if a dealership can commit to a strong budget for their inventory volume, then they should consider posting all of their units, sometimes twice per month. What about dealers who have a really large inventory or those who have a more limited budget? How do they decide which inventory will work best on Craigslist? This is one of the main questions we get from dealers, and the answer is typically based on the individual dealer's inventory. For example, with an RV dealer who is limited to the number of postings they can do, I would advise they avoid listing those really high-end Class A motorhomes, unless it's a great deal on an aging unit. So in that case, we could possibly restrict their account from automatically listing any Class A's at all. Or another option would be to apply a price filter for which inventory goes live. If it's a motorcycle dealer with a huge inventory, I would recommend setting a priority to list the newest inventory items first, so we're always getting the newest in stock units live as they come in. And this allows for a good variety to be posted and helps generate leads on that freshest inventory. And then for dealers with mixed inventory, it depends on what categories they want to focus on. But we can set the automation to only list select categories like motorcycles and RVs. Or we can get even more granular and say, only list my ATVs and personal watercraft. Then in winter months, you may have a switch to only your snowmobiles. Great. So it sounds like there is a lot of flexibility on how your system chooses the inventory that will be posted. Once that is all figured out, what are your recommendations for days and times to post? The very best advice I can give is to always have inventory going live every day. Even if your dealership is closed on Sundays or Mondays, just because you're closed doesn't mean they're not shopping. Posting inventory live daily just increases the chance that when a customer is searching for something, your ads may be at the top of the search. Craigslist searching is chronological, so when you perform a search for, say, a Polaris Sportsman, the results display in the order they were posted. The only exceptions would be if someone was searching for a Polaris Sportsman and then added specific colors or options. Then it would depend on if your unit matched those additional search terms and if they were included within your posting. For time of day, I advise posting mid-afternoon to evening. Most people aren't searching Craigslist at 10 a.m. on a weekday. However, that's most likely when you're going to receive your phone calls as those people who saw your ad last night and want to know more are going to be reaching out the next morning. Yeah, that makes sense. So once the ad is posted, what if the pricing changes or the dealer sells it at the store? Our automation is going to take care of updating the ad. We import the dealer's inventory from Dealer Spike every day, so when we recognize information has been updated, we revise the ads during the next scheduled process. Each dealer's revised schedule is set within their account, so we can trigger the revised process to kick off as soon as we import their inventory file. With sold inventory, we have a few options. Some dealers choose to keep the sold item live and continue to receive inbound calls or walk-ins at the dealership. Each one of your Craigslist postings is only good for 30 days, and you're paying for that posting, so many dealers would like to keep them live. 
Others, no matter what, want that ad taken down. And in that case, we can automate that process exactly as we automate the revising of your live items. And we recently added an option where we can actually revise postings with content you choose for all sold items. I've seen dealers use language like, this vehicle is currently pending sale. Please call us to inquire about availability of this or similar units we have in stock. That's a great way to drive more calls to the dealership and potentially convert the shopper into another unit you have for sale. That's great advice. What about dealers who are located in an area with a lot of nearby cities? Should they pick just one location to post in? Now that Craigslist charges for postings, we've seen that you can really post anywhere you want without having to worry about getting either blocked or flagged for posting in more than one region or for posting outside of your area completely. But just because you can doesn't always mean you should. I think it's important to really evaluate where you want to target. Of course, we all want to get customers from all surrounding areas. But if I had a dealership that was in a region that's right in the middle of two or more Craigslist regions, I wouldn't necessarily want to split my budget between them all. I would first take a look at my sales stats and where my shoppers are coming from. If I'm commanding my direct region right now via other marketing channels, and I'd probably want to target that outlying region that I seem to get some rollover business from and commit my full budget there. In some cases, there will be two Craigslist locations that apply to your dealership. If possible, I would recommend posting most, if not all, inventory in both locations. But I definitely wouldn't reduce my volume in an effect to accommodate both. We have a boat dealer in North Carolina who posts to three Craigslist locations, and they're spending about $3,000 a month in Craigslist fees, and they split the budget between the three. They average about 250 to 300 phone calls per month off of Craigslist and get around 400 to 500 shoppers going to their website from their Craigslist ads. So the traffic can be awesome if you're not skimping to accommodate the multiple locations. Okay, so switching gears, um, I know we have a lot of dealers who post their inventory to eBay Motors, but for those that don't currently use eBay to sell inventory, what suggestions can you make for dealers who are interested in getting started? My main piece of advice is to have a black and white plan for how you are going to handle those national leads. eBay is only going to work for your dealership if you have a start-to-finish plan for how your dealership works national leads. Everything from how you plan to accept payment to working with out-of-state financing, and most importantly, how are you planning on managing the shipping? We have a Harley dealer who's been using Auction 1 to 3 to list on eBay for years. And at any point in time, they have about 20 to 30 bikes listed, and they are selling a ton of bikes each month. But they have a dedicated team to work the eBay leads, and they have and follow great processes. With the dedication this dealer has put forth with their eBay initiative, they have been an incredibly strong e-commerce dealer for major units. And they even push dealers from their website to their eBay store to let customers buy immediately. Also, to be successful on eBay, you really need to tell the full story of the unit through great pictures, video, and awesome detailed descriptions. But this is also important on every site you publish to, including your website. Giving your shoppers the very best presentation of both the unit and your dealership in your listings can help set you apart from another dealer when a customer is in the middle of their shopping process. And by doing this, you're connecting with the shopper and giving them a complete experience, as if they were right there at your store. And this helps convert those shoppers into buyers. Definitely. Thanks, Tracy. So, dealers, a lot of you have asked for a more hands-off approach to managing your inventory listings. We know that the Craigslist tool that we have offered in the past worked pretty well if you were just posting one or two units per month, but for those dealers who want to keep a steady stream of inventory going like Tracy has talked about, Auction 123 is really the best option for giving our dealers a fully automated application for listing and managing Craigslist and eBay posts. So as part of our partnership, we are offering Auction 123 to our dealers at a reduced rate. So for Craigslist or eBay, the price is $100 a month, and for both Craigslist and eBay, the price is $150 per month. So that is a $50 per month savings for you guys. So Tracy, when a dealer signs up for Auction 123, what kind of experience should they expect? Is the Auction 123 software something that these dealers are going to be using every day? Through the years, we've pushed to make nearly every aspect of our software fully automated, while still allowing for manual intervention when a dealership is looking to have a more hands-on approach. 
We recognize that dealers need to be spending much more time working in their leads and making sales as opposed to getting involved with the actual listing process that it takes to generate those leads. Many, many dealers using Auction123 might never log into our software once the setup process has been completed. They allow automation we've built for both Craigslist and eBay to maintain the entire process. And for those dealers who prefer to manage the process themselves, our tools are enhanced with settings and listing defaults to completely streamline the manual listing process. Our goal is to have you set up everything once and be able to accommodate the unique way that you want to market your inventory online. Can you go over some of the benefits within the Auction123 tool that make the Craigslist automation process so easy? Sure. A lot of times we have dealers who are unsure about letting the automation take over, especially if they've been manually picking and choosing items to post. Once our team walks them through the, all the settings and features, it almost becomes a no-brainer. The process is super easy. First, we need the dealer to enter their Craigslist account credentials into the system. Then we walk them through all the options for account settings, including the option to customize your Craigslist ad content. Lastly, we set up the automation, which the first step being, what do you want to spend each month? And that's controlled by deciding how many postings you want to go live per day or per month. Then what days of the week do you want to post? And as we discussed earlier, we recommend posting every day and having your postings spread throughout the afternoon and early evening. So once everything is set up for when to post, how do you decide what to post? Our support team takes the dealer through a comprehensive list of filters to determine the kind of inventory the dealership wants to post. If they want used or maybe new and used, only units with a description, only units within a set price or year range, or our image filter to only post an item that has, say, a minimum of five photos, because maybe there's four stock photos and you only want units that have real images. We also have a filter that lets the dealer choose what types of inventory to post. Maybe I only want motorcycles and not my ATVs, or I only want my towable RVs. Once the filters are set to say, okay, this is the kind of inventory I want to go live, we then have a priority setting, so you can say, of all of these eligible units, prioritize the aging units first, or prioritize my lowest price units first. And this is the process that happens behind the scenes every day. What if there isn't anything that meets those requirements? Do you still continue posting to meet the dealer's budget? No, we only post if there is eligible inventory. So just because the dealer has a budget limit doesn't mean we always meet that. An important thing to understand is that we only deem a vehicle eligible to be posted if it's not currently live on Craigslist. So we're not just posting the same units over and over. Now, if the dealer wants us to try to fulfill the budget, then we can enable the account for automated reposting. This is a setting that says, Auction123, repost my live Craigslist ads every X number of days. But we're only going to repost a unit if there are available posting slots for that day. For example, if you are set to post 10 per day, and there are only three eligible units that are not currently live on Craigslist, then we'll post those three and that's it, unless you have reposting enabled. Then we'll go ahead and repost the seven oldest units to fill up those 10 spots. Okay, got it. Can you tell us a bit more about the actual Craigslist application and how it needs to be installed at the dealership? Sure, the Auction123 Craigslist app is a Windows-based application, so it cannot be installed on a Mac. The installed app is what ensures our Craigslist integration works, and it's really important that it's installed on a PC at the dealership that you know will be logged on or locked at all times, or especially during your scheduled posting and revising time. The Windows login cannot be logged off or the PC cannot be shut down. And this is why we usually recommend you install it on multiple PCs at the dealership, so in the event one is shut down, there's another running that can take over the processes. And how does the dealer pay for their Craigslist fees? Inside of the Auction123 application that's now installed on the PC is an area to enter the dealership's credit card information. This card will be charged the Craigslist fees as each posting goes live. Once the credit card information is in the app, it's encrypted so anyone with access to that PC won't be able to see the info. Your credit card will need to be added to all instances of the installed app if the dealership has decided to put it on multiple computers. Now, once we start posting, or if the dealer is manually scheduling postings through our tools, Craigslist may send some posting verification emails. And these are really important to pay attention to. We especially see these happening when it's a newer Craigslist account or one that's not very active. These emails will be from Craigslist, and they'll go to the email address associated
associated to the dealer's credit account. Once received, the dealer just needs to complete the posting process, which includes also entering the credit card information. We advise the dealership to pay attention to that Craigslist email address for the first few days and complete the verification emails as soon as they are coming in. If they aren't completed quickly, Craigslist will become suspicious of the account and our automation is going to continue to list, but no one's completing that posting process. In our experience, as long as these are handled as they come in, the email verifications from Craigslist will dissipate within a day or two, and everything will run smoothly from that point on. This seems like a good point to go over pricing again. Through our partnership with Auction123, we're offering that special pricing for the Craigslist tools of $100 a month or $150 a month if you also want to add eBay. Um, Tracy, could you go over Craigslist fees again for those on the call that may not be familiar with those charges and how that works? Yeah, so dealers posting in Cars and Trucks by Dealer have been paying $5 per posting since December of 2013. Then motorcycle and RV dealers started paying $5 per posting in November of 2016, and the rest of the by dealer categories all went to paid posting model in December of 2016. For the major unit categories we support, pretty much all by dealer postings are $5, with the exception of farm and garden, which are $3 each. The paid postings are good for 30 days, and there's no need to worry about the old days of getting flagged by your competitors. Once you've paid for that ad, it will stay live, as long as you don't have anything vulgar or you're trying to advertise more than one unit in each ad. Now, each reposting is $5 as well, and there's no longer the opportunity to renew an ad, so those days of having your ads go up to the top of the results are gone, unless, of course, you're paying for another reposting. But being at the top of results isn't as important as many think because Craigslist offers many options for shoppers to filter the results to find what they're looking for. People don't just go to Craigslist, start at the top of the page, and make their way down. They're searching for what they want. Great. And that takes us to the end of the presentation. Thank you so much, Tracy. These are such great tools for our dealers, and we are really excited for our partnership with you guys. So now that we've gone through an overview of posting on Craigslist, uh, touched on eBay and discussed the exciting progress that's happening with Facebook Marketplace, we want to go ahead and take some questions from our attendees. And just before we jump in, um, I wanted to let you guys know, for dealers who are wondering how they can go ahead and get started, you can reach out to the Auction123 team at that number listed on your screen, 888-514-0123, uh, or email sales at auction123.com. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started on questions. If you still have a question that you want to ask, you can go ahead and type that into the question section on your control panel. And as a reminder, if you need to expand that control panel first, just hit that orange arrow button in the corner. Um, and Tracy, I'll just let you go ahead and take the first question. So we have a question um, from somebody who's a boat dealer asking about Marketplace, um, basically because they have their 12-digit hull ID and uh, no miles. So when we get that that digit in those the hull ID into our system, uh, when we're feeding out to Marketplace, in the event that it's not um, a full 17 digits, we do flesh it out to be a full 17 digits um, by adding characters. So that's something that we can discuss further uh, with you specifically. Um, and in terms of miles, if we're importing hours, then we can convert the we can put the hours in the miles field. Now, granted, that's not a perfect answer, uh, but it's what we have to work with right now until Marketplace can fully support non-automotive. Uh, we have another question about local Craigslist. Um, they're saying that their their local their most local market is very rural and small. And they're asking if I recommend marketing in a nearby larger city market. Again, it really depends on where you're getting your traffic from right now. If you're trying to target your specific local area, I would say go for your local area. But if you don't expect to get any kind of good traffic and you're within a reasonable distance from that larger market, I would go ahead and, and focus my budget and all of my um, spend in that larger market. So somebody asked if we have an estimated time frame on when motorcycle dealers will be able to go live on Marketplace. We are currently going live on Marketplace with motorcycle dealers. Um, we're sending, I, I believe, a, a good number of motorcycle dealers to Marketplace and they're getting a lot of leads and they're getting um, a lot of calls and, and mostly messenger questions. The, the stipulation is the fact that Facebook at this time doesn't actually have a separate category called motorcycles. 
Um, it may be deceiving to say that because if you go to Marketplace on a desktop, you might see, it depends on your user, you might see that under the type search in vehicles, motorcycles, but that is not currently present in the mobile app and they're not ready to build that fully out yet. But we are sending motorcycles to Marketplace. They're going to the vehicles category and they're being found. Dealers are getting leads and, it, and it's working. Somebody asked if $150 covers the charges for Craigslist or if you still have to pay your $5 fees as well. Yes, you still have to pay your per listing fees. Um, so each ad that goes up is $5 and each reposting of that ad is $5 as well. And if you plan on posting uh, Craigslist ads to multiple regions, so if you're splitting your inventory up into three regions, you're going to have to spend $5 per posting per region. Uh, somebody else asked me how much does it cost to list on eBay? Uh, so eBay fees are wide variety depending on the category of inventory you're listing. So in the event that you're listing motorcycles as one fee as opposed to a commercial truck it's another fee, I definitely advise that you go to um, eBay Motors and look at the fees section and make sure that you're fully well versed on, on what the fees will be. One thing that's important to know is that through our integration with eBay, we're able to provide you with the name, telephone number, email address, and location for each person who places a bid or makes an offer. So it's not just a selling site any longer. Um, we turn eBay into a pretty good lead generator for you. Um, so it puts you in the driver's seat on, on reaching out to those, to those interested shoppers and starting the conversation on your own. Uh, somebody asked if I can re-explain how payment works with Craigslist. So Craigslist does charge per posting, and we have you install an application on a PC at your dealership. It's the Auction123 app. It needs to be running for all of your scheduled Craigslist processes to go live. And within that app, you can enter your credit card information, and that's what pays for your Craigslist postings as they go live. I did mention that from time to time when the dealer first onboards with um, automation or starts listing, you might need to do some email verifications just because Craigslist might see your account as being green. And when you get those email verifications from Craigslist, you'll have to end up manually entering your credit card information. But once you've taken care of those and Craigslist stops sending them, which usually dissipates within the first day or two, then it's going to be a very smooth process from that day forward. And each posting that goes live, it, our application will pay for it with your credit card automatically. Somebody also asked, uh, oh, if uh, parts and accessories. We do not have integration, um, Auction123 at this time, for a complete parts and accessories integration for either eBay or Craigslist or Marketplace. So um, I don't have an ETA as to when Marketplace will be available or integration will be available for that. Um, and let's just do the last question. Uh, somebody said, can I post multiple times per day, say at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. every day? Now, if that question is pertaining to Facebook, the way we feed to Facebook is hourly. So um, we will import your inventory from DealerSpike, and we will automatically send a new file to Facebook each hour. So if there's new items that come in from our import from DealerSpike, then we'll add them to Facebook Marketplace. Um, if an item is sold, we will remove it from Facebook Marketplace. And then if there's revisions, we'll obviously update Facebook Marketplace. So that's an automated process. For Craigslist, we feed once a day within a time window. So you might say, okay, I want to list at 9 a.m. And then we'll try to put all of your ads live um, as fast as we can starting at 9 a.m. But we generally recommend saying a, a spread out time. So um, I, as I mentioned earlier, doing afternoon to evening. So say 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then what we'll do is we'll take your daily allocation for Craigslist postings based on what you've set as your budget. And we'll spread out those postings throughout the day automatically for you so you don't have to touch it. Great. Well, we are out of time, and uh, we apologize if we weren't able to make it to your question. Um, but dealers, if you are interested in more information about Auction 123, or if you just want to get started right away, you can contact Auction 123 um, at the phone number or the email listed 
here on this end slide. Um, you'll also be receiving a follow-up email to this webinar, and that's going to allow you to really easily request more information as well. So you can also wait for that if you'd prefer. Um, thank you guys all so much for attending our webinar today. We really hope that it was informative and helpful for you guys. And Tracy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Lauren, and a big thank you to all who joined us today. We're looking forward to working with you guys and getting you up and running on Craigslist, eBay, or Marketplace. Bye, guys. Thanks again.